This morning, I really felt to share about the power of the tongue. So many of you would have probably heard something about this. You might have listened to a preach before. You might have even read it for yourself. Um, but I just really felt like this is something that is so part of our everyday that it is something so important to look at. So research shows that your average male speaks or says about 7,000 words a day. And your average female says about 20,000 words a day. So ladies, we need to listen to this preach three times more than the men do. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm one of them. So, you know, and if we're not saying it like this, we're saying it on WhatsApp voice notes. That's, that's how the ladies, you know, rank in their, their points, you know. But on average, the average person speaks 860 million words in their lifetime. That's what research showed. I, I didn't do the math, so you're welcome to go and blame Oxford University if you really want to blame someone. But isn't it incredible that we get to speak so many words in our lifetime? But here's the question, what are your words producing when you are speaking? Because in Proverbs, and you're welcome to turn there with me, Proverbs 18, verse 21. If you've got your Bibles here, your phones, you're welcome to go there. Because you're going to spend time in this little portion of Scripture. And it goes like this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The words that come out of your mouth produces life or it produces death. Your words have power. It can build up or it can break down. It can help or it can hurt. It can inspire or it can create insecurity. It can bring war or it can bring peace. Your words have power, and we need to watch what comes out of our mouths. So the Bible says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and we speak about 860 million words in our lifetime. But here's the thing. The next part of the scripture, the, there's like the first part, second part, it says, those who love it will eat its fruit. The words that you speak produces fruit. And this might be good fruit. It could be bad fruit. But here's another one that I want to throw in there. It can also produce no fruit. Because just because you're not speaking death does not mean that you're speaking life. And I feel like a lot of people get stuck in this. They say, oh, but I'm not speaking death over things, but, but are you speaking life over things? Or are you just in this lull of fruitlessness? So if you feel like your life isn't producing fruit either way, then you're probably stuck in this little, little runt of fruitlessness. And I really want us to pray for freedom over that this morning. So later on, we're going to have a time of ministry and we're going to pray for that. But what this looks like is when you, you just, I don't know how to, you don't have words. It's like, oh, I don't have death to speak over, but I also don't have life. And often that comes from lack of relationship. And lack of relationship means that you don't know the one who gives life. 
and you just end up speaking nothing. And the problem with speaking nothing is that you produce nothing and you actually create that the people around you gain nothing. See, because our words is not just for us. Our words are for those around us as well. If you look at scripture, there's so many people who speak life over one another and even death over one another. But Jesus is such a beautiful example of speaking in love and just speaking from a place of intimacy with the Father. So next, I want us to look at speaking death. So we've got speaking nothing, and then we've got speaking death. And this is something that can very easily install fear in people, which it shouldn't. Because if we know God, then we should know where life comes from. And this death thing shouldn't be so scary. But there's a lie that a lot of people have believed. And, and I really feel that it's something that's going to be broken off of people today. Is this lie that I cannot say what I'm going through. Because that is speaking death over my life. So if I'm sick, I can't tell anyone that I'm sick. I just need to say, I'm healed. That's it. And don't get me wrong, we need to watch our words. But the thing is, if you do not look at what is happening in the reality, in the natural, how are you going to speak the supernatural over that? You need to take what is happening in the natural and say, I'm actually not having a good day today. But God, but God, I'm not feeling too good today. I'm feeling a little bit sick, but I know that God is the healer. So can you pray for me? That's the difference. And I want us to have a look at a scripture. Um, where is it now? Let me find it. And it is in... Acts 3, verse 2. You're welcome to turn there. And it says this. A man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the gate, the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. And I want to pause the scripture right there. Because most of you know the rest of the scripture. But a lot of us stop our speech right there. I mean, he literally said what his reality was. The natural was, hey dude, I'm so sorry, I actually don't have money. I'm as broke as you are, you know? And if you stop right there, that is where you start speaking death over yourself. And your speech that you keep on saying, repetitive speech starts to form your belief system. So if you are continually stopping at this point, saying what you do not have, that is where the problem comes in. That is where the death speech comes in because you are speaking death over yourself. You are speaking death over others. 
If you're looking at their situation, you're like, oh my goodness, they're just going through this and it's just so hectic, and you stop there, guess what? You're not really helping them at all. So they could have very easily stopped right there, and nothing significant would have happened. And I want to encourage you this morning that if you find yourself speaking like this, that it's time to start speaking life over your situations. But I also want to make this clear to those who think they need to hide what is happening in the natural, who've been told this lie of if you, don't, if you say that you're going through financial difficulty, it means you don't have faith in what God's going to do. It means you don't trust him or you're speaking death over yourself. The problem is not speaking that. The problem is stopping there. Because if you, if you make the natural, the, the reality known, then you can speak the supernatural over that situation. And we're going to carry on with the scripture because it does carry on. So for those of you who stop here, this is a good example of how to carry on. And it goes like this. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. They didn't stop with the natural. They spoke the supernatural over the situation, and he received so much more than what he asked for that day. God wants you to receive so much more than what you are going through. But you need to take what is happening in the natural and start speaking the supernatural over that. And that is where we start speaking in authority and we start speaking from a place of victory. And sometimes it's so hard to do that when you don't see it in the natural. But do you know what happens when you start speaking it, people take notice. And sometimes, or most of the times, it's those people who don't know God. And it's like, but I don't, their life's like this, but they're speaking like this. Why are they speaking like this? And curiosity gets sparked and people get saved. That is what happens when you speak life. It's not just for you, it is for others as well. So we need to share what we're going through because God has also given us community to speak life over us. And I'm so blessed to have this community who have spoken life over Keegan and I, and we get to speak life over others it is such a beautiful thing. But if you're sitting in your little dark place and every time someone asks, hey, how are you doing? No, everything's perfectly fine. It's so good. Yeah, God is so good. And yes, God is good. But at that moment, you're not going through something great. And you actually need love and support. Because what happens is now your words and your heart are having a head-on collision and it's not making sense. And that's how you end up in depression because no one knows what you're going through so they can't help you through it. And you think by only speaking life and hiding what is happening is gonna produce life. It doesn't. You need to speak life over the situation. So this thing we call speaking life. What is it? It is the word of God. 
His word is life to our bones. And the hard part comes when you try to speak life, but you do not read life. You do not know life. And I want to read a scripture from Luke 6 verse 45. You don't have to turn there. And it says, The good person out of the good treasures of his heart produces good. The evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. You cannot speak life if you are just filling yourself with negativity. You need to speak from a place of being filled with life. How are we filled with life? By reading the word of God, by praying, by spending time with people who are speaking life over you. That is how you are filled with life. Because God speaks life over you. So the moment you start reading this, and I want to make this clear, you do not need to know this from cover to cover to realize that there's life in here. So if you are a new Christian and it's your first time opening these pages, there's going to be life. There will be life in it because the Holy Spirit makes the word of God alive in you. So this speech thing, I was reminded of a moment just before Keegan and I were married. His grandparents gave us this little treasure chest tiny little treasure chest. And inside of it is a tiny little letter. And this this is a little gem. So you're welcome to come and read it later if you want some marriage tips. But I'm just going to read the last part. And it says, if you take out more than you put in, the box will be empty. And I really felt like that relates so much to our lives when it comes to speech. If you are speaking out more than you are putting in, what life do you have inside? Or is it fruitless speech? Because you can't put into your little treasure chest, like it says here, out of the good treasures stored up in his heart. The good that you put in is the good that you can pour out. We need to read the word of God. We need to be so filled with him that whenever we speak, life comes out. That whenever we see a situation, we are like, that is hectic, but I know that God is good. And I know what promises he has for me. Because it's so hard to look at something if you don't know the promises of God. If you don't know what he says over the situation. If you only know that there is sickness, then all you're going to see and hear is sickness. But if you know that there is healing and he is the healer, you are able to speak that over the situation and produce life into that situation. And what I love about speaking is we don't do it alone. (laughs) You don't just, okay, some of you maybe do. You may be just in your room speaking to yourself. (laughs) But I love that we get to do it in community. We get to speak to one another. We get to build one another up. We get to love on one another. We get to speak God's word over one another. And I love it when I come to work and we start speaking about scriptures and things and we like, and all of a sudden, like the room's just like, you know, you just feel so uplifted because you're bouncing things off of one another. Hey, what do you think about this? What are your, you know, what does scripture say about this? What does this scripture mean? There's so much life in speaking about the word of God. And there's, I I feel filled with joy when I speak about the word of God. Because he is life. 
He is joy. So what happens when you speak about him? That is what flows from you. And a scripture that I love isn't, oh, you don't have to go there. Malachi 3 verse 16, it says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. How beautiful is that? When you speak to one another, the Lord pays attention. He pays attention and he listens. He pays attention to every single word that you are saying to your friends and those around you. How beautiful is that? But also, how challenging is that? That every word that comes out of your mouth, he's listening. And it's producing something. What is it producing? And that's where this part comes in, in James 1 verse 19. It says, Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, and it carries on. But I really want us to be challenged to engage our minds before we put our mouth in gear. Because so often we speak like this. We want to be quick to speak, slow to listen. We somehow got that swapped around. Don't know how we got it right. But there's so much value in taking a moment and thinking about what you are about to say. You can avoid so many conflict moments if you just take a moment to think about what you're going to say. Engage your mind before you put your mouth in gear. Don't just blabble out. And I know sometimes you get so excited that you just want to little and but I think, I think, that's the biggest one. I think it should be like this, or I think, and you end up hurting people more than helping them. And maybe you have great things to say, but think about it first and then say it. I'm not saying that you have to stop speaking, but I'm saying watch what you speak. And there's actually, a, some of you might actually know this, but there's an acronym for this. And this is a great thing to teach your children if you have children. It's a great thing for you to take on for yourself. And it is called think. Okay, think. It will be coming up on the screen, hopefully. So, okay, it won't be coming up on the screen. <laughs> But if you want it, you can just ask Google for the THINK acronym. But it is this. T stands for true. Is it true? Is this a fact or is this a feeling? Is this your own opinion or is this solid truth? And then make the decision whether you want to share it. H stands for is it helpful? So, is it going to help you? Is it going to help them? Is it going to help the situation? If not, it's probably better left unsaid. I stands for inspiring. So, does it improve in the silence? That's a good question to ask. Would what I have to say right now improve the silence? But is it inspiring? Because sometimes even if you are sharing hard truth, people can leave feeling encouraged by the way that you say it. 
and by the way you inspire them. After you have said, hey, I don't think what you're doing right now is the right thing, but, and then you, you share out of love. So we always want to inspire. We want to lift people up. Then N is for, is it necessary? Is it better left unsaid? Sometimes it really is, guys. It's better left unsaid. I sometimes have to, you know, when you just have to swallow the word quickly. And then sometimes you can also hear when someone hasn't done it. And you're like, yeah, you probably didn't mean that one. I hope you didn't mean that one. But is it necessary? Do you really have to say what you are saying right now? And the last one is K, and it stands for, is it kind? What are your motives behind communicating the thing that you're communicating? So these are some great things that you can think about, think (laughs) about, before you speak before you make that decision to just blurt out your 860 million words in your life. Think about it. And I really love reading scripture because there's so much that God speaks over us. And if you want to be filled with life, Go and see what God says about you. It is so beautiful. It is so inspiring. It is truthful. It is necessary, definitely necessary. And it is kind. So beautiful. And I really think that if God speaks such beautiful words about us, How much more should we be speaking about him and his goodness? Because it brings life not only to us, but to others. And there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 17, and it says, Let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let us be so filled with the one that we love, that we can't help but boast about him. Parents, if you think about your children, how often are you like, oh, you should have seen what so-and-so did, and I'm so proud of my child, they achieved this. Just to say, Hillside kids and teens are thriving in the schools. I just want to give applause to those absolutely thriving in the schools. We're seeing such good things. But if you can boast about your child so much, how much more should you be boasting about the Lord? Because that is what gives you life. That is what gives you life to speak over your family. That is what gives you life to speak over your friends. It is what gives you life to speak over yourself. 